us now look at factors affecting vaccine efficiency. Factors associated with the vaccine itself. We have different strains of disease causing organisms and some of these will not respond properly to vaccination. Also, sometimes when you have a disease outbreak in the flock, the best way to ascertain what strain you're dealing with is to take a sample to the lab and the laboratory will advise you accordingly. Factors associated with vaccine administration. How you handle the vaccines, as earlier discussed, is very, very important. Maintaining that cold chain during the process of the vaccination is of paramount importance. Vaccines should be handled carefully to avoid contamination and breakage, which in turn would reduce the efficiency of the vaccination. Using chlorinated water, we've already mentioned this and said chlorinated water will affect the vaccination process. Avoid using chlorinated water. Route of vaccination, more so if you are doing intramuscular or subcutaneous vaccination, it is important to consult the experts, the veterinary doctor or the veterinary technician to assist you do this kind of vaccination. This way, we are assured of proper vaccination and enhance we are able to achieve the expected results. Factors associated with the bird, maternal immunity of the flock, the immunosuppression, the sanitary status, and other genetic factors as well will play a role in how vaccines respond once they are given to the flock. What about management conditions? The hygiene practices around our poultry farms. Do you have a footpath? How are you managing your litter? Is there proper aeration? Are the birds in a stressful environment? Are we cleaning our feeders and drinkers every day using a disinfectant? Are we resting our poultry houses in between different flocks? Are we practicing an all-in, all-out, more so especially in disease outbreaks? Management of the environment is very important and cleanliness and hygiene is paramount. If you're going to have vaccines, work at their best. Now let us look at the common diseases found in the farm. As a farmer, you will encounter challenges along the journey. One of the major challenges is disease control and management. But do you know with proper hygiene and adhering to vaccination schedules, coupled with biosecurity measures, you can successfully keep disease pressures at the lowest in your farm? This in turn cuts down on the costs involved in medication, and hence you'll be able to enjoy your profits. So what are some of the diseases we are going to be looking at? We are going to look at Newcastle, Fallpox, Marek's disease, Gumboro, Coccidiosis, and Infectious Coryza. And like I've said, these are just some of the diseases. There are so many others, but these are some of the common ones that, as a farmer, you're bound to encounter them along the way. Let us start by looking at Newcastle disease. What causes Newcastle disease? Newcastle disease is caused by a virus that affects both domestic and wild birds as well. Clinical signs vary depending on the system affected. Some virus strains will attack the nervous system, others the respiratory system, or even the digestive system. What do you observe when the respiratory system is affected? The birds will be gasping for air, coughing, or sneezing. When the nervous system is affected, we'll observe paralysis, 
and the twisted neck. We'll also see tremors and the bird will be suckling as well. When the digestive system is affected, we'll observe diarrhea that is greenish in color. Other signs will observe a drop in egg production, abnormal eggs in color, shape and surface. As we can see on our slide, the eggs will not have a shell. You can see the shape. You can also see the greenish diarrhea, the twisted neck, and all this will show you that you're having a Newcastle infection in your flock. How is the disease transmitted? Newcastle disease is spread by infected birds that will shed the virus in their feces or body fluids. The virus can survive for a very long time outside a host, that is the bird. It can remain for several weeks in the environment and usually all members of the flock become infected within two to six days. The treatment and prevention for Newcastle. Being a viral infection, there is no treatment for any viral infection. So the sure way is to prevent and ensure that we are keeping the disease infection as at its lowest. We can use antibiotics to control secondary infection and this will assist in supportive treatment. It is good to know that the virus can remain alive in manure for up to two months and even dead carcasses for up to 12 months. So once we have an infection in the flock, it is important if we practice all in, all out, we clean out our poultry houses to ensure that we break the cycle of the disease. How we dispose of the dead carcasses is also very important so that the disease does not come back attacking us. Remember we said even wild birds can carry the virus and spread it to our flocks. So if you don't dispose of the dead carcasses well, the wild birds will feed on them and bring back the infection to your flock. The surest way of prevention relies on good quarantine when we realize we have an infection and observing biosecurity procedures and of course vaccination. It is also worth noting that the virus is killed by disinfectants, fumigants and direct sunlight. And all this we do especially after we've had an outbreak of the disease. We must clean up the poultry houses and air them and break a cycle to allow for the disease pressure to go down.